So I think I should wear glasses today because I'm doing, what am I doing? Oh look, oh, I start with glasses then I'll take them off. That's the way it goes. That's what we should do. Hey. So I was, uh, you know, I listened to a bunch of people, whatever, but T. West is always interesting. Maybe I'll put a link to him thing. But he was talking about that, um, something we talked about a long time, that uh, somebody's psychology or, or you, or let's put it this way, white people are psychopaths. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, no. There was a thing that said that basically if to be a CEO of a company, you have to really be a psychopath. And so there's a, well, not a fine line, but there's a, a, a through line, a, a connecting line between a successful CEO and a, and a criminal, <laughs> and a psychopath, you know? So anyway, so you get to, you get to thinking about that. And T. West was talking about that, too, with this, all this stuff with the whole thing with Farrakhan and, you know, banning and whatever they, whatever they do. And so, you know, to find answers, sometimes you, know, you just listen to people, or what you can do is you do your own research. And so I was looking through, I showed this book a, a while ago. Huh. Oh. Remember, Bernie? Any... This book. What's that? Uh. Yurugu. Yurugu. I just think how she says it. Um, and this is from uh, uh, Dr. Remember Adi, who was a disciple of uh, John Henry Clark, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, let me, so I just want to look through this book because, because the premise is uh, 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 psychopath, psychopathic behavior. Let's put it that way. So let me. Um, so if you look through this book, so I found this. Uh, show you how to do an academic thing. Maybe I'll do that. Let's start. Let me start over here. Let me start over here, then I can jump around. Take this off. This, uh, this is page uh, uh, 390. Uh, Cowell says that the result of, of, of uh, abstract self is an inner world which is filled synthetically. So he says Cowell. So now, now you guys have who is this Cowell guy? So let's go back. We'll go back. We'll go back to that at the end. Let's go. So I found the Cowell, the, or at least the first reference to him. And uh, let me read this paragraph. It's page 61. Ooh, did I take that over here? Page 61. Uh, it says, time in European culture loses its phenomenal character and is instead experienced as absolute and oppressive. Once again, we have a concept created by human beings. Re rare, uh, re refined? Okay, refined. Uh, uh, refined, okay, maybe it's refined. Then used against them. With logic and European development, this process is necessary. I did that sentence wrong. With the logic of European development, this process is necessary because the, the mechanical time is a precondition for the triumph and ascent and ascendance of European science and technology. They are the supreme values because they are progress. They are progress. Okay, I said quotes. Several theorists. Uh, Junga, Munford, here's this guy, Joel, Joel, uh, Joel Cobble, that's what we were looking for, and others, have made the connection between the establishment of watchmaking in Geneva in, in 1587 uh, and, the ascens and the ascendancy of Calvinism, you know, Calvinism, off chance of, of religion, there in the 16th century, Calvin intensified the importance and of uh, the Calvin intensified the importance of idea of predestination. Okay, so Calvin, this guy, you know, the religious guy, Calvinism, you know, have Calvinists over there. His first book, one of the things in the beginning, he intensified, right, the importance of the idea of predestination while preparing the uh, prince of, by preparing the people for salvation in heaven. Calvinism trained them to uh, for assembly line production on earth. In Junga's words, or then goes to something else. So here we go. Calvin had this whole, uh, the, pushed the importance of this idea of predestination, right? 
you're here because ah, it's predestined. You're supposed to be. Everybody has a predestination. You're here, blah, blah, blah. There's no getting out of your predestination. While preparing people for salvation in heaven. <laughs> Calvin trained them uh, for assembly line production here on earth. Okay. So let's go to let's go to something. Let's go back to the sofa here. Okay, so now we we're saying, hey, there's no heaven on earth. You know, we hey, we waiting for the heaven up there, waiting for Jesus to come. Okay, here we go. Let me go back to the sentence. Remember, I had stopped there. Let me just leave that. Let me go here. As one becomes more involved in exploration of European forms, the the organicity that's in quotes, of the culture, as Carvel puts it, that guy that we talked about, uh, becomes more and more apparent. In, what, in, our, in, in our terms, it is unfolding in the asili. I don't know, that's a word, that, I think that's a word that, that uh, I need, you know, remember made up. Uh, uh, that, uh, that is revealed. The nature of the aesthetic, and aesthetic is just appearance, beauty, you know, usually such a way you beauty, but it's just the appearance of something is influenced by the European concept of self and the material and rationalistic uh, substratum of the culture. Let me read that over again, I know it's difficult. The nature of the aesthetic is influenced by the European concept, the nature of the, of the appearance of the beauty, is, is, is influenced by the European concept, let's go back to that Calvinist kind of concept, of the self and the materialist and rationalistic substratum below the, of, the, of the culture, or it's the underlying thing of the culture. The behavior and response of, the character, uh, uh, of that characterized the individual in European behavior, uh, uh, in, I'm sorry, in European society. Let me just skip uh, uh, to another section here. Europeans are bound to each other by virtue of shared, some, she was somewhere to, uh, Ulta, Morocco of power sounds like macho kind of thing domination world supremacy and expansion the inner uh, cultural dynamic of aggressiveness competition and mutual distrust are all separating but not binding now all this sounds very uh, I know you all I'm confused we're all confused but let's go let me go back to another page page 218 this might clear it up I'm going to really clear it up for you here we go says here, she says, the European receives pleasure from the feeling, okay, let me go back and say something. Think about academic books. Usually, this, the, the, whatever that concept is, is stated over and over again in different ways so that you, at the end of the day, you really have an understanding of what, you're, of what the, the, the author is trying to say. So let me read this over again. The European receives pleasure from a feeling of control over other people. This feeling is extended to the most ordinary participants of the culture through her identification with European hegemony. European European ways of doing this. She says, she says her hip. Usually say him. She, she, uh, but uh, profession. I mean, what she's doing is she's saying, saying him all the time. Saying her. You know how they, they're doing these smart things. So you so you got that right. European receives pleasure from a feeling of control over other people. You know, there's no heaven here. There's heaven someplace else. To get to heaven, you got to go through me. I will teach you how to get to heaven. Blah blah. Or understand heaven, right? This feeling is extended to the most ordinary participant in the culture through her identification identification with the European hegemony, European way of working. Now, why did we go through all that? Let me go to my Now remember, I had shown you something before. I had remember I um, downloaded the uh, case reparations, right? And the whole uh Tanahashi Coast thing. But then I also own this thing, this thing, uh, for America to live, Europe must die. Um, that, uh, and that was, uh, for America to live, Europe must, must die. That was a, a thing by Russell Means, okay? And Russell Means was arguing that, um, that the European culture is, is the youngest culture. Out of all, he's naming five cultures, you know, uh, 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 black, red, yellow, brown, and then the European white cultures, right? And he's saying that because they're the youngest, they, they act like children. You know, they, they always want the attention and, and whatever, whatever, whatever. Now, one last thing. When I put my little, uh, remember, Neely Fuller's Junior, just the, because I, I, I put it in hardbound, so this was the original cover. Well, Neely Fuller Junior, is one of his 
his his famous state famous his statement is if you do not understand the system of white supremacy and he got it correct with racism what it is and how it works everything else that you understand will only confuse you so but perhaps professor Ani here is trying to do is make you understand European culture, understand the, the, the psychology of, of everything, like, understand what's, what, what, what's, going, what's, going, what's, what's, what's going on, right? But you see, we don't have to go through all, we don't have to go through an academic book, Nelly Fuller Jr. is not necessarily an academic book, to understand any of this stuff, right? I'll leave this here so you can see what it is. You just look about and say, this person is not acting right. This this person is acting right in this in this. In other words, if you're in the business, if you're in, in, in the politics, if you if you're in the the Trump strata, they all to them they they're, they're all acting correctly. They're doing a the Calvin thing. What they're all acting correctly. It's like, there's nothing wrong with what they're doing. Hey, you subjugate somebody. You you do something for enjoyment. You know you throw the people in the pitch for the lions to eat them. You know you. Whatever you do, you, you, you put a lot of drugs and stuff like that, you, you crowd people in a little small area, take away their jobs, put a lot of drugs in there, and then watch what they do and be, and be entertained. That's what they do. Uh -huh. And then people say, hey, no, we don't want, we don't want this. We, then what happens is when the people fight against it, they don't fight to, be, to change that entire system. They fight to become the people that's now watching. <laughs> They're taking over, you see? So, so our problem has to do, uh, I won't say less with white people exactly, or with their mentality. I'm about with this system they created and they enjoy this system that they are in. And, and for us to want to then, you know, just replace the people who are being entertained by the system makes absolutely no sense for humanity. Let's put it that way. So that's the job. The job of ADOS is in, 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 in demanding that the debt be paid that means that the debt is so overwhelming, the entire system has to be overhaul, overhauled. And it's happening worldwide. The entire system has to be overhauled. And what that means is that the whole the Calvinist notion, this whole thing about, you know, whatever they do, whatever this, mentality, this, this white supremacist mentality system is, that will be replaced with what? You have to replace it with something. So we need to be working on a re the system replacement, which Nelly Fuller Jr. Even says is a system of of humanity that you're looking for a universal man universal, universal woman that, that that is on earth and not waiting for something in heaven let's put it that way i'm throwing all that stuff in there okay is this clear for you for like a little, little lecture i'm sorry a little off i'm sorry hey it's the way it is in the world the way it is here for me t from the patterson's taking the train to tibet letting you know what i only suspect from a desk this is a desk okay of the a d o s American descendants of chattel slavery. That would be North American descendants of chattel slavery.